Hey, you know what's awesome? Voting. Hell yeah, voting was so awesome. I want everyone to know how awesome voting is. Well, luckily you can. Fair Fight is a grassroots organization started by Stacey Abrams in Georgia. Their mission is to fight for voters' rights and encourage people to vote. There's a Senate runoff election in Georgia on Tuesday, January 5th. They're focusing their efforts on those races now with volunteers and donations, so that's certainly one way we can help folks vote right now. That's so good to hear. I almost feel kind of okay about the future. It will be a hard fight, but progress is definitely being made. Well, until then, let's roll the video. Today is truly the day where I take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. I'm gonna try a reflow solder with an Easy Bake Oven. But first, let's talk a little bit about the history of the Easy Bake Oven. First off, Easy Bake Oven has come a long way. The original ovens used high-powered light bulbs to cook up those gooey treats. This had to change starting in 2006 when the United States put in new regulations for energy-efficient light bulbs. As a result, the current modern Easy Bake Oven is not your millennial childhood Easy Bake Oven. It can reach temps between 350 and 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, let's talk reflow. For benefit of those watching who might not be fully up on electronics, shout out to my in real life friends who watch to be supportive. Love you. Let's kind of do a high level overview of what reflow is. Hot air reflow is the process of assembling a circuit board with hot air that affects the solder paste. So of using a spool of solder and your handheld iron, you use this paste kind of gunk <laughs> that gets applied with a stencil over the board. So everywhere where you'd normally do a hand joint, uh, you are basically putting this paste. You then place the components um, either by hand or using a pick and place machine that's this big robot that spits out little bits. And then when heat is applied, the paste reflows just like when you melt the solder with your iron and the circuit board is assembled. It's really efficient and, and awesome. This is how like large scale manufacturing of PCBs works, like everything from like your phone to your Nintendo Switch. It's all reflowed, they push them through these ovens, yada yada. Hobbyists will use uh, hot air guns or toaster ovens to do this at home on a small scale. Different types of solder paste reflow at different temperatures. Uh, there are, a, there's a whole series of low temperature pastes that fit right in the temperature range of the Easy Bake Oven. The one I'm using today is called Maker Paste. It's like this kind of small tube you can get for pretty cheap from Adafruit, and it reflows at a temperature of 284 degrees Fahrenheit. Right about the range uh, of other more popular brands like Chipquick, all between 281 and 285 degrees Fahrenheit. So as I just laid out, in theory, this should all work, but I'm fully aware that this still sounds ridiculous. Uh, I had this idea back in January 2020, and that's also when I purchased the Easy Bake Oven from Walmart. Uh, so this has been kicking around for a while, but you know, we all know what happens after January 2020. I don't have to go into why this was so delayed. Yikes. To reflow though, of course, you need a PCB. Uh, I want to use a PCB that was small so I could have a few just in case uh, and also one that a design that I knew worked. Uh, I've had these wards on the channel before and I've also used the circuit a decent amount. Um, it's just a simple LED blinking circuit uses a couple transistors, caps, and resistors uh, so pretty simple. So it's the same circuit that I used for the paper circuit soldering project over the summer. So this was also my first time applying solder paste uh, and my first spread was a little bit off, not quite fully on the pads. So I scraped that off uh, and I'm glad I did because the second application was really, it went a lot better. Placing the components though was stressful. Um, you had to kind of drop them so that they didn't smear the paste and I was already like kind of nervous. Um, my hands were shaking and I honestly was starting to worry that the Easy Bake Oven wouldn't be the only variable in making sure these boards worked. Uh, it, was, it was really stressful. The Easy Bake Oven does not tell you what temp it is internally. Uh, the only control is the on off switch on the front. So to work around, I used an oven thermometer, stuck it in there uh, so that I could be able to tell what the internal temperature was. Also purchased 
from Walmart in January 2020. My hypothesis was that the boards would reach temp around the same rate as the thermometer. So the idea was that once the thermometer read 284, then the boards would have hopefully reflowed and everything would be okay. Otherwise, there really wasn't a way for me to know what was going on because you can't see inside and it's kind of poking in the dark. So with nothing but some hope <laughs> and like some really loosely strung together theory, uh, I had nothing left to lose but to push the board into the oven, followed by the thermometer and watch the temperature slowly rise. Once temperature was reached, uh, I took a deep breath uh, and pushed the board out to see what happened. Oh my God, it worked. And I, I couldn't believe it, it worked. <laughs> I was really speechless. Uh, I was wishing I wasn't alone because it was it was such a cool moment. Like this idea in theory it should work had actually worked and well, the board looked nice. The joints were really clean. Uh, I, I couldn't have been more impressed on just the, the visual inspection. But you know, one question remains, will it blink? So I didn't reflow the coin cell battery holder because I was worried about it shifting with the surface tension of uh, the solder paste. But additionally, I had also by mistake left the ground pad exposed on the uh, stencil. So I would have had to kind of work around that. So I thought it'd be easier just hand solder it. Additionally, um, I also neglected to bring a 1206 battery, which is the really, really small coin cell with me to my workspace. So what I did instead was I soldered two pieces of wire onto the power and ground pad so that I could test with a larger 2032 cell that I had on my bench. And lo and behold, it, it worked. It was blinking. I couldn't believe it. Usually when I hand solder service mount stuff, there's usually at least like one component that's maybe not fully soldered down. So the fact that it just worked, I, I couldn't believe it. I really, I couldn't believe it. So after that, I took a break for lunch, uh, cooked something in a regular full-sized adult oven, um, and basked in my easy bake oven glory. Uh, and then I, I thought a good test would be to do more than one board at a time. So I set up three more boards with the paste, placing the components, uh, and got them ready for reflow. Again, stared at my thermometer, waited for it to reach temp, and pushed on my boards. And again, beautiful success. And here they all are with their batteries in, blinking away. I couldn't be happier with this experiment. Like I, I really didn't expect it to go this well. Uh, I essentially have a reflow oven now that was super affordable. I didn't have to do any mods to it. It just works. Now, obviously this wouldn't be for everyone, but for my purposes, it's a great fit. I only do a board every once in a while and you know, I'm not doing big production runs. So yeah, for hobby level reflow soldering, two thumbs up to the Easy Bake Oven. <laughs> I honestly feel like I just unlocked the next level of electronics. There were certain like ideas for boards that always felt a little bit out of reach for me because I didn't have like all of the more advanced assembly tools. Uh, for example, like making a board with a SAMD21 on it. Um, like sure you can, hand solder, I didn't necessarily want to deal with that. So the fact that now I have a way that I can do that uh, is awesome. Now, if you decide to try this yourself, of course, you know, don't use this for regular easy bake oven activities afterwards, AKA no food. Once you put solder paste into this, that's what it's only use is for. Also, this thing gets hot. There's warnings all over it. Like use common sense, follow instructions, yada, 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 you know. So as I said, like I had this idea back in January, the year got crazy. I really didn't have the energy <laughs> to even think about it anymore. It felt really silly, especially with everything that proceeded to happen in the year. Uh, so this is a nice, this is a nice way to end things. Just a nice wholesome experiment gone well, you know? I'm Liz, the Split City DIY, and this has been a video.